Well, it is my pleasure to um, thank some people and, and bring up some uh, others and talk about some statistics and things of that nature, as we always do. First of all, uh, you know there are a ton of great companies that help underwrite the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. And I'm going to wait until uh, Bob Fields takes the stage before we announce all of them. Uh, because they're, they're very important, very numerous. I don't want to leave anyone out. But I want to thank uh, two companies specifically for tonight because it takes, uh, believe it or not, a lot of money to pull off um, a, an, an event like this, which is really just a, a good reason for us to get together and share a few drinks and have a little food and, and congratulate one another as we go into the weekend. So I want to thank um, Tyson and Karen Doan for helping us underwrite tonight. Thank you so much. We also want to thank Stuart with uh, Reesters Fine Foods. Where, where, where's Stuart? Stuart here? Anyone? Yep. Are you? Are you going to fake out? What? Okay. Well, we want to thank you and Stuart. Uh, for, and with Reesers, uh, for pulling us off. And we also... better looking and a lot younger. Oh, he is. He's younger and better looking. Okay, got it. So we uh, want to thank both these companies for making tonight happen. We also want to thank a number of people that often go um, unappreciated throughout this entire series, and that's the judges who, who help us pull this off. They volunteer their time at every event, they're not getting paid a nickel um, to do what they do and allow us to do what we do. So let's give it up for the judges. <laughs> let's give a special thanks to the master judges who are here this weekend. Who, master judges, raise your hands. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you for being here. We want to thank our tour staff. They've done a phenomenal job. Where's Chris Turner? Thank you, Chris. You did a fantastic job. Obviously, we couldn't have done this without Michael McDermott. Let's give him a big hand. Um, they're not on the tour staff, but they work just as hard, and that's Karen Murphy. Thank you so much. And all the KCBS, KCS reps uh, along the way, and uh, we're, we're delighted to have some of the best ones here with us tonight. Uh, the Lowman's and Gages, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and, and the, oh, I'm getting around to it. I'm not done yet. <laughs> um, we have uh, Mike and Teresa Lake who just work their tails off left and right. Thank you so much. I think we also have a board member here, uh, Mike Richter. Are you in the house, Mike? Thank you. I think we have several former board members here. I know uh, uh, Rod Gray is here, or was here, is right? Is he right now? Okay, he had a rope. Is he already getting a head start on the weekend? <laughs> we want to thank Rod. Any other former KCS board members? Oh, Wayne is the current and former. Board member. Are you a permanent board member? <laughs> okay. And of course, Mike Lake, uh, a former president of KCBS. So thank you all. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, a lady who made it all happen, Carolyn Wells. Right. <laughs> and our adopted uh, KCBS uh, family member, Bill Deeds. <laughs> we could not make this happen. This year, the fifth year of the Sam's National Barbecue Tour, we had the highest number of teams ever compete. 724 teams throughout the country. We had the highest number of teams register when the registration opened up. In 30 minutes, we had 511 teams register within 30 minutes. Wow. 
Speaking of those teams, uh, there are several here that I think deserve a little special recognition. Is, is Vince with Rhythm and Cue in the house, or is he already cooking too? <laughs> he probably is still on the road trying to get here. Um, the Smoke and Seeds Barbecue team, are they here? Yeah. All right. They are the Madison Regional winners, and Rhythm and Cue is the Las Vegas Regional winners. Uh, a team that became my, uh, someone that I'm rooting for a little bit more than usual uh, this weekend is Rocky Top Bar Barbecue. Uh, Walt, where are you? <laughs> Walt had an interesting experience getting here, uh, as if UT fans haven't had a rough season already. Um, I think he got rear-ended by a Razorback. <laughs> Or maybe it was a gator. <laughs> Sooner or later, we'll know. <laughs> this is tough work. This is tough work, I'm telling you. I have to think about this stuff a lot. <laughs> Walt is the Richmond Regional winner. Um, from South Haven Regional, Cajun Blaze. Are you guys here? Yeah? Okay. Y'all better hope they don't show up. And from the Midwest City Regional, the Clark Crew Barbecue Crew. Are you here? Is that after a meeting with her? All right. Congratulations. He's already got a call. <laughs> he wishes. Uh, Clark Crew, ironically, or not ironically, but incidentally, not incidentally. Uh, they're the number one team in America right now. Is that correct? Wow. Welcome to the target range. We also have uh, Darren and Iowa Smokey D's, who's number three in America in the house. I think if. Uh, Michael and I are correct on this. Uh, Darren, you may be the only team that's been here every single year at the National <laughs> Lots of practice on the target range coming up. Um, Big Papa Smokers, are you here? Number 16 in the nation right now. Probably traveled the farthest to get here. Shaking Bacon, the number 18 in America. Are you here, Shaking Bacon? Shaking and Bacon, Shaking Bake. If you're not first, you're last. I don't know. Um, so, how about Smokeaholics? Troy Burkhardt, are you here? Yeah, there you go. Number 19 in America, and then last but not least, number 10 team in America, Yellow River Barbecue. As you can see, Bob, we have some serious uh, competitors in the house, and uh, they're aiming for that $150,000 that, that's coming out of your wallet this weekend, or bills, one or the other. Um, before, before I turn this podium over to you, I'm going to give you two more stats that you're going to be interested in. So far, in this tournament this year, best we can compute, now I was not a math major, so don't take this to the bank, there were at least... 54,750 racks of ribs cooked <laughs> in, in this tournament. Wow. And if you think that's impressive, there were 292,000 pounds of pork. 292,000 pounds of pork was cooked. And I guarantee you the majority of that was bought at Sam's Club, so I know that's going to make you happy. Come on out here, Bob Jones. Thank you, Mike. So I sit up here, and McDeeves up here talking about, you know, he's a he's a ball, and he's got his ball tucks on, his wool hat on, and stuff like that. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, Michael Cloud comes up here and starts talking about, I'm a ball. Well, guess what I am? I'm a Kentucky Wildcat. <laughs> Living in Arkansas. 
does the post to good. So Carolyn, we probably need to have a little conversation on ship construction. <laughs> and Mike, believe it or not, I used to wear that wool hat like you did. Look what happens when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I want to thank um, the entire group for coming. Uh, there's two really important groups here. You know, the teams, I know you've battled, you know, basically since February. And you've had to come a long way. You've had to smoke a lot of stuff to get here, and I appreciate that. I always like to appreciate the judge. The last four years, and this is the fifth year, it's going to be a big deal for us. A couple of things that we're going to be looking at, um, you know, we've got uh, a different marketing approach that we're going to take to this, this next year. And Mike's going to cover a little bit of it with you tomorrow morning uh, in the judges' meeting and everything like that. But, uh, we're really committed to even more to this barbecue deal this year and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taping you know some comments from you all over the next couple of days and next year when we go ahead and do this this deal did y'all hear that I got you. Year, <laughs> so next year when we do this deal we're going to be taping you all in the clubs before all the competitions across the United States. So we want to hear y'all's comments and, and, you know, give us, you know, your true to the heart thoughts about, about the business, about the competition, and your passion is really important to us. So if you would, you know, help us out tomorrow and over the next couple of days, you'll have a couple of cameras in your face there a little bit, but just be honest and talk from the heart. So can y'all do that? Oh, yeah. couple of things before I get to the sponsors, um, you know, who was here last year? Quite a few of you. Darren. Okay. <laughs> Darren was here. We already had that conversation. Um, what did I promise y'all? Darren. I promised y'all a steak dinner tonight, didn't I? You didn't have a steak dinner, did you? No. I apologize. That one's on me. So tomorrow afternoon after the one o'clock deal and the competition and everything like that, we all have time to cook some steaks if I bring by. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're gonna have some of us come by mid morning or something like that. We'll bring you a nice big old thick Angus ribeye steak. So work. Just like Mike said, there's a bunch of people here that, that we couldn't have this thing, and we couldn't have the purse, and we couldn't have all the logistics and everything if we didn't have the support from our sponsors. And we've got a lot of sponsors that have actually been with us for all, all five years. And they've been, you know, the individuals that's been there helping us make this better and better and better. We get together after every tour and sit down and say, what can we do to make this more exciting and more impactful to the member? Uh, so there's a lot of suppliers that give us a lot of support. Just some of them here. And I know some of them are here at Got Reps, and I know some of them, um, matter of fact, they thought it was Friday. They called me today and go, hey, we'll be there tomorrow night for the, for the dinner. And I said, wait a second, we're going to have the dinner on Thursday. But uh, Bush B, Bush uh, Best, is anybody here from Bush? Okay. Cargill and XL Port. Kelly, I know you're here. Thank you very much. We've got Heinz, which has been a sponsor for all five years. Uh, we've got Hunts. We've got KC Masterpiece that's been here. Um, Kingsford has been here all five years. National Pork Board, Jared, or Rob, is anybody here? Nope. Uh, Shane from New Zealand Land, I know you're here. Thank you very much. Troy from Research, thank you very much. We've got Tones, um, we've got Tyson, Karen, and where's Mr. Carter at? We've got Sweet Baby Race. And we got Pepsi Creole Light. Big support. So for the, those of y'all that have been here, you understand that you know, this thing started because of our, our structural approach to our business. You know, there was two specific purposes why we started the barbecue tour. One, we wanted to educate individuals on how to cook and entertain outdoors, which is growing and growing and growing every year. And then the second big deal 
is we wanted to appreciate our business members. There's a lot of restaurant owners and a lot of smokers and cookers in this room that we wanted to say thank you. So once again, matter of fact, who owns a restaurant? Thank you very much for shopping our business every day. We're going to have some gifts for you tomorrow. Over there. I think I eat at his place as much as he shops at my place sometimes. <laughs> but we've got some appreciation we're going to give you tomorrow, all right? So uh, hopefully you take some of that uh, and renew your Sam's Club membership because we want your business for the next couple of years. Uh, hopefully you're going to have a really good this year. This year, Portland's been fairly reasonable, right? <laughs> and. Yesterday, I broke $1.68 bonus pork coins in 643 clubs. So they're going to be cheap. You're going to have a lot of pork this year. If you're a restaurant owner, you go ahead and make sure that's on your menu. You know, butts are really big right now. Uh, it's a good time to be profitable. But, uh, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so, so just a couple of things on the agenda and everything. Tomorrow, um, we had this thing tonight because y'all asked us to. So hopefully that worked out better for you. It's going to give you a little bit more focus for tomorrow night. Um, tomorrow's competition. It's going to be really interesting because we've got some meats that we brought in that I don't even know what they are. So um, we're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow. The entire building will be down, we'll be sampling the wares and everything like that. We're going to have a real nice, tough, fair competition uh, and have some fun there. And then you all get to business on Friday night. And then Saturday morning we go to town and we've got some great judges that's going to evaluate it. And I'm really going to love giving away $150,000 on Saturday. First of all, I chose the lamb. The main reason I chose the lamb and that big trailer out there that has a uh, New Zealand lamb on it. And I said, if there's going to be any protein that we're going to do that maybe off the wall to let's barbecue that, it would be that. So, luckily, I drew number one so I could get the lamb because that's all I brought to do anything with. So what I have here, and we're from Wisconsin, so this is a play on a euro or a gyro, wherever you are from the country, and I call it a re-row for Wisconsin re-row. What I did is took the rack of lamb, ground it down, made it look like rocks. I mean, everybody knows Wisconsin's rocks. On a good uh, Simbix rock bun with homegrown grafting Wisconsin tomatoes from our backyard, cucumbers, and I topped it with Beer battered fried feta cheese. Perfect Wisconsin. Nice. No doubt about it. Luckily, there's two inch for it. Judges, I'm going to pass the tray down, let you take your portion. More the merrier the judges. We've got an additional judge. We'd love to hear your name and what you're doing. Uh, well, um, my name is Zephyr. I'm one of the Gathering Places, I guess, team lead. So. Welcome. Thanks for being here. It's wonderful. <laughs> judges, go ahead. Dive in to what you, you've got a lot to eat, taste, get a good flavor, and then I'd love to hear your comments. I love the cleanness. I like the cleanness of it. Very nice flavor, that feta cheese. Very nice. I agree, the, uh, the feta is just really sets it off. I may be speaking too early, but it'll probably be my favorite one. I love feta cheese. I love cheese and beer combined. Um, I love lamb, and the, the cucumber just kind of takes it up a notch. Well, I'll admit, I actually just moved here about a month ago from Milwaukee. Oh. So, <laughs> love the brats. And uh, 
I too, I think we all agree. I thought it was really good, and I also like the the garden vegetables in there. It tastes really good. Nice, uh, nice, nicely paired. We uh, we chose this right here. We got a had a bone in Kansas City strip loin. We deboned it. We also had venison tenderloin, which turned out amazing. So we chose to turn in both. We picked a simple. We went salt, pepper, garlic, threw it on the fire. Turned out really good. Thank you, Travis. Let's see, what did you, what were your thoughts? This was really good. Cooked very well. The seasoning, especially on that strip, oh my gosh, that was really good. Venison was great. Uh, and again, you know, cooked perfect both ways. It's good. Thank you. Yeah, we eat a lot of venison in my house, um, obviously. So, venison was really good, um, but he's right. The steak, you forget what simple sauce for garlic can do. It was just perfect on the, on the Thank you. steak. Simple yet elegant. Thank you. I think the steak was a little overcooked for my liking. I like a little more blood. But I, I truly enjoyed the venison. It was very nice. Okay. Thank you. Well done, Charlie. It did look like a little bit rare. Is that what you have? Excellent job. Congratulations, Travis. Now, who was the third to choose? Rhythm and cue from the West Coast. Got them from all over the country. Now, which dish, which dish is yours? Ours. Are the, I, I'm Vince, this is Alexa, we are going to be here from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we made today street tacos, and we wanted to represent the Southwest. So, uh, just to save a little time, I'm going to go ahead and pass it out to you while Alexa explains what is in it. Alright, this was the furthest spin that we could do from traditional barbecue. This is your flash grill street food. It all lives on the seasoning and the freshness of the, and quality of the ingredients. So Vince pulled down that um, skirt steak that was up there, which was absolutely beautiful. We marinated it briefly in some salsa and my fabulous uh, taco-flavored rub. We made up a fresh, you know, little little slaw-type thingy to go next to it. Normally, you'd have baked cabbage and a street taco, and we dressed it up with some sweet corn and some grilled pineapple and peppers and a little bit of everything you could possibly want in there. We brought along authentic Mexican crema and queso to dress it up with. Have at it. Hope you enjoy. It's anything like the description. Oh my. Um, I really liked the uh, little hints of pineapple, the sweet corn with mixed with the meat, prepared the sauce, everything. I really enjoyed it. Very tasty. Very, street tacos done well. <laughs> I guess I am the fast We need to run a little <laughs> delay. Holly's trying to chomp down the slow. We don't want a choking hazard. Y'all just eat at your own pace. But you know what? Real colorful. Zephyr, if you might mind giving us your thoughts. I can eat that all day long. All day long. <laughs> Not work day, all day, like 24-7. You're ready to go. Wow. That's big words. Carol, are you ready? Oh, no. <laughs> oh that would be the word. Godmother of our degree. If you blame on your knee. Fresh. Yeah, it's great to we um, really pretty clean in the household, so it's nice just to have that from scratch kind of, you know, everything from the corn tortillas, all the homemade sauces, fresh vegetables, really great. Terrific job. Well done. Please, a round of applause. Rhythm and cue. Now we pass those down, please. Cajun Blaze. Now, where are you from? Gonzales, uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Please tell us what your thoughts were when you were looking at all those proteins up there and what you were going for. If I was coming from Louisiana, everybody's looking at that Cajun name, wondering what's going through your head. Well, I knew when one of the choices were probably that we had to accept it. How bad would we look from Louisiana and not do enough? The problem is, I knew it was expected of us, so we grabbed those and we also got some hot fish ribs. So we took uh, some of the ribs on the bone, smoked them heavy, made them debone them, put them in this holiday sauce. And we just did some directly on the grill with some light layer of and seasoning. Then we have frog legs that we just grilled with butter, garlic, and seasoning, and try to keep it simple. And here we have some frog bombs for you. Now we got to debone them, now we out cream cheese or a little thick. Right? Wonderful. We'll serve these up. 
I would definitely at least wear a recliner if I was going to go a whole meal of this because it's really good. Um, I love the hollandaise. That was really, really good. Um, and then also the fish on the rib, delicious. It was seasoned very well. Really liked it. Good taste. Um, I love everything bacon wrapped. I'll say the seasoning seemed a little heavy for me on that one. Um, cream cheese was a nice touch to it. And then throw it just delicious. Can't go wrong with those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love the cream cheese touch on the bacon wrap. I don't know much about frog legs, but it tasted pretty good to me. I wouldn't know how to compare it. Uh, this just blew my mind. This holidays is just incredible. I could eat that whole thing. So I'm going to add it to my pile over there. No one's allowed to touch. Uh, so really creative uh, and, and just beautiful food. The frog that tasted like frog rather than chicken. <laughs> uh, holidays. That was good. I mean, I think holidays should go on everything. So, that was great. Now with the ribeye, you're cutting off the cap part of the ribeye. This is the eye. Fantastically delicate piece of meat off the, off the cap. Very tender. And each one of you have a choice. You can choose what you want to cut off of each piece. This will be yours to cut off of, and that way you can uh, get a, a piece of the, the eye and the cap. Understand the full scope of that cut. This fork will be um, possibly.
Yeah, that, the one. This one. The middle, that's yeah, that, one. That's the one I want. Too big. Too fat or too, too long? Too wide. It's just got to be a little oh, guy that can slide in. You see a wet star boat container coming at you. That's a team turning in. We've got 50 of the best teams in the world here today. Turning in their chicken category right now. A 10 minute window with their one second late don't be disqualified. So is that 10 minutes? Ah, come on, baby. There we go. Please keep your head on the Okay. Let's do that's that one that was sauced up. Let's look, let's look, keep looking, but at 12 noon we'll have a workshop right here at the stage. This guy, that's the better guy. I think he would. Uh, I don't like how tall that one is compared to that one. But that It'll be this would fit right in there for this. Watch this. Lift that lid and square this thing up so we can look at it correctly. Square to the table or square to you? Okay, my uh, bet, er, best station one that I thought was uh, number five, and the least tasting was uh, number three. Because? Uh, the number three, the least tasting, uh, I thought was a little bit overcooked. It was, uh, my piece was a little on the soft side. Uh, the best tasting one, it had a very nice flavor. It was uh, what I thought was done pretty well. Uh, my favorite one was number two. Um, had good flavor, well balanced, uh, meat was cooked perfectly. Uh, my least favorite was probably number three. Uh, the meat was a bit mealy, um, flavor of the sauce overpowered the flavor of the meat. And number four as well, um, a sharp bitterness in the taste and it's a bit dry. My favorite one was number two and my least favorite was number three. Uh, number three was kind of mushy. Uh, Number two, I thought, was did not have too much sauce on it, so you could really get the flavor of the meat. Uh, it was juicy and not overcooked. I think that was part of the problem with number three. Probably the least favorite was number three. Uh, I, li I like the flavor of most of them, except number four was very good in tasting, but it was also very dry. And uh, I, uh, that uh, number four, uh, the sauce was a little bit overwhelming, but overall, they were all very good. Um, I thought they were all good. You know, it's Sam's Club Championship, so they're all up there. Um, my least favorite was number four. It was um, a very unusual taste and didn't really care for it. But the rest of them, I, all, I scored them very high, but they're all good. I thought the one that I liked the least was number one. It just didn't have much for flavor. Uh, my favorite was five. And number four, I thought it just didn't have bite through skin and it seemed a little tough. You want to, if you're going to run multiples, just change up, you know, two, three spots and, and that's it. And uh, kind of the way I played as well. Quarterback, uh, I'm actually looking at Damon Winston, but my first pick I'm crazy for thinking that this winner wants to think is the first better value play at the Wolverine of the quarterback. I think my most favorite was number one. Um, because it was tender, it had a nice smoked flavor to it. Um, and the least favorite was number two, I think. Um, it was more mushy, and it just was seemed a little bit overdone. <laughs> they were all extremely good, so it was really difficult to choose. Um, but the, the couple were just slightly, I thought, overcooked 
a little bit. So when we looked at at least the second and third one, kind of felt like they were just a l slightly overcooked, but it was just barely. Um, I really liked the tenderness um, and the pull, at least on the last one, and felt that it was a good example of, of what something should be. And it had, I felt, a good, at least aftertaste um, to it as well. I liked uh, number two the best, and, and probably number five the least, but it was real tough and real close to choose because obviously they're all quite good, <clears throat> but that's the way I would pick them. I, I like number one and number four. Um, and again, they were all absolutely wonderful, but um, really enjoyed the taste of the tenderness was astounding. Um, <clears throat> my, my best two were my number two and number three, and the least was number one. It was uh, overcooked. Um, Well, my favorite was number two. It had a good flavor profile. I liked what they did to it. Um, the first one was probably my least favorite. It was overcooked, and it had a very tough uh, bite for that first bite. Can they get a sushi roll? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There. I like number four. Um, it had a it had a good flavor. It it looked good, and it tasted, you know, in this in the seven eight category. Least. Pardon? Least. Oh, the least had to be number five. It was it was overcooked, and I have no idea why they gave us three different pieces when two of them should have been eliminated. If we just, if we, just if we give us the first one, it would have been better score. This one lowered a little bit, and this one killed it. <clears throat> On this grouping, I would choose number four. Number four um, had a lovely smoke. Uh, it was moist throughout. All bites were moist throughout. It had a nice little crust on it, too. Very good spice. Number one would have been my least favorite. Um, didn't have a, any, any significant flavor. It also started out moist, but got dry very quickly as I ate it. It, was, um, the chew, it wasn't moist throughout the chew. So. My favorite was also number four. The presentation for all of them looked pretty good. Too many meats. And uh, number two as well, they had three different sections. My least favorite was number one, the pulled pork versus the tender. Tasted like two different meats. Yeah, basically they all look good on appearance. Uh, my least favorite was the number one. Uh, a little, it was a little dry. Uh, number, number two, um, a little mouthful of fat on a part of it that sort of ruined the taste, taste for me. It was tender. Number three I liked. Uh, four had a slightly different taste to it. Uh, it was a little bit dry, just uh, but still very good. Much better than what you're going to get in the restaurant. And the last one I liked a lot, both uh, the slice and the pieces. 
All in all, basically good. Nothing was bad. If it's okay with you, I'll just pass the mic. <laughs> uh, the appearance on all of them were fantastic, and some of them were just slightly better than others. Number two probably being the best. Three and three had a slightly different flavor, unique. Four and five slightly dry. Well, uh, in my own opinion, I believe that my number five was my my number one favorite. I also like number one. I like the flavor of the meat. And the tender the tenderness was there. Um, I would say that probably this number three was my least favorite for some odd reason, but all of it had the tenderness, and really in all re reality, every bit of it I had was real good stuff. So, um, but as I say, number five was my very favorite. Okay. All right, I was pretty similar actually. Uh, one and six were very close. This was a little moister. They both had great beef flavor. Uh, I think the moistness was what got me here, but the beef flavor really came through in both of them. My least favorite is also three, and a uh, little drier, a little less tender, and also there's a little bit of a taste. I'm not sure if it's a dirty box, a little creosote or something. There's a little bit of an aftertaste with that one. But uh, overall, very good grouping. Yeah, overall, we had really good brisket, um, and the best probably for me were uh, one and five. And and, and five, uh, it, it, did, it did have... Uh, Really good tenderness, uh, beautiful box, and I liked everything about the taste, except for I had just a little too much um, sauce or mop on it afterwards, and it just disguised the the smoke and the beef flavor a little bit for me, and I scored it down one for that. Other than that, it's pretty good brisket all the way around. Yeah, I agree. This was a good round of brisket. Um, Two of them, number two and number six, I thought were pretty good, and number, excuse me, number five. And of those two, I would pick number five as my favorite for this round. Um, I had some issues with number four on the texture. It still got a good score, but not as good as number five. Okay, my two favorites were four and five. Uh, my highest favorite was five. Um, both had great flavor, uh, both had great texture, very tender, uh, very moist, uh, just a good job all around cooks. My favorites were four and five also. Uh, I think five was outstanding. It was done perfectly, cooked perfectly. The flavor was there. Four was pretty good. It was just a tad tough but otherwise the flavor was right on and the rest of them were very good also but uh, those were the top two but the fifth one was actually the very best. Hey this is Chris Turner I'm the logistics coordinator for the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour I'm talking about the Tyson Chicken Challenge that we have on tour this year it's an ancillary category they're using boneless skinless Tyson chicken breasts it's flash frozen you can buy it at any Sam's Club and the teams, they can cook whatever they like. It is an open category. Uh, and this year, the first place is 3000 here at the finals. Second place is 1500 and then $500 for third place. Uh, if you look on the KCBS website, you'll see all of the turn-ins that we've had throughout the year. Some great looking dishes, along with the recipes with the pictures that are great to look at. Uh, and I got to say, it's some very tasty food. Uh, we're getting ready to see who's going to win today here at the finals. And uh, again, thank you for Tyson for putting together this extra category and extra cash for the teams uh, to cook some amazing dishes. This is the Tyson Chicken Challenge and our table had three uh, chicken dishes. Do you want me to, you want me to talk about? All right. The first one was some kind of a, I'm going to say <clears throat> peanut satay um, with rice. 
Uh, the second one was um, macaroni and cheese with a really good crust with a little bit of bacon and a lot of chicken. And this one had um, uh, mushrooms and onions and then chicken breast with, um, green and, uh, with red and yellow peppers. Well, this was this was good, uh, but to me, by far and away, the best one was uh, number two. Uh, had a great flavor. The mac and cheese uh, made it moist. Um, the bacon flavor it was all around a an excellent uh, entree. And the other two were good. First one was a little dry. Uh, so, uh, flavor I'm not sure about. The last one I enjoyed, but not as much as number two. This one right here, I found number whatever, you don't want to know what number it is. This first one right here, uh, I found was kind of tough, and the sauce on that was not real good. The rice was very good. This this one here, that was fantastic. The best one, thing I had ate all day. And this was, the taste was okay. I found mine a little tough, though. 701.1316 for third and reserve grand. Your third place team, Serious Q Barbecue! I had a little tickle in my throat on that one. Fantastic job, Serious Q. Excellent work, Serious Q. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five and fifty. And fifty. That's the last two up here. Fifty thousand dollars and twenty-five thousand dollars. Between these two teams here, we're going to get seventy-five thousand dollars in the next five minutes. Next five. Let's make it the next three minutes. We can overachieve. I want to do two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> Before we go down the road here, I'm not going to show you, trust me, I'm not going to let you. The heart medicine thing's got me worried. Where are y'all from? Salt Lake City. Where are y'all from, Outlaw Hawks? St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you. Life changing money, I think they were wanting to know for government purposes, maybe taxes, I don't know. No taxes in Missouri. <laughs> Your reserve grand champion today, R and R Barbecue. That means your grand champion with a score of seven zero two point eight three four four, Outlaw Hogs Barbecue. Well, I'm Jeremy. Oh, go ahead. I'm Jeremy Moyers with the uh, Moyers Competition Barbecue Team. Uh, we're here in Bentonville, Arkansas, the Sem Club um, Nationals, and uh, we just found out Thursday we actually were going to be able to be here. Um, we cooked uh, the local in Marietta and went to South Haven, Mississippi, tied for 11th there. So we didn't think we were going to be here. And uh, Thursday, about six, about 4:30, I guess, um, I got a call and said that somebody had to drop out of the contest that we were in if we wanted to do it. And I happened to already be in Little Rock, um, actually in Russellville, Arkansas, um, at the time, uh, on business and had nothing to do Friday and Saturday. Um, so I got online, got on Facebook, uh, started making phone calls, begging and uh, pleading to borrow smokers, cookers, uh, meat, rubs, sauces. I had nothing with me. And uh, the barbecue community has been 
the incredible community they are came together. Um, uh, Mike Davis with Lotta Bull, Mike and Debbie uh, loaned me a cooker, a car, gave me meat, um, everything we needed. Um, Mark Rasmussen with the Barbecue Superstore um, uh, gave us some some supplies we needed. There's just a whole bunch of teams gave us everything we needed to be able to cook this weekend. Um, so uh, my cook partner uh, Bill flew in from Atlanta, and come on over here, Bill. And uh, so we spent last night on a stick burner we'd never cooked on with meat we'd never cooked um, and uh, gave it our best shot. So awards are here in about 30 minutes and I guess we'll see how we how it turns out and how we did. Uh, it was a little rough, uh, just to be honest. Uh, we were a little discombobulated. We didn't have certain knives we needed. Um, we fought the, the pit a little bit and some wood and whatnot. Um, but we made it here. It's an honor to be here, and I'm, uh, it's a great thing Sam's Club is doing, and with KCBS to promote the support of barbecue, so we're glad to be a part of it. Absolutely. You met all your temps, and you got... We met all our temps. i tell you what, we turned in, looked beautiful. Absolutely did. The boxes are great. Um, tenderness was good. Um, it was just really smoky. Um, we had some problems with uh, controlling some of the wood and some things, so it's, it's not what we normally would turn in, but I think, you know, it, it, know. yeah, you never know. It turned out fine. Um, but anyway, it's, it was still it was a great contest to be a part of, and I'm glad it what worked do you out. What you when you're not cooking barbecue? Um, I own a company, Moyers Group. Uh, we work with churches all over the country um, doing audio, video, and theatrical lighting systems. Uh